That's just pure joy. That's happiness right there. Howdy. Thank you, sir. Action figures, they say. Well, here it is. The Hasbro HasLab Spangler Proton Pack Kit from Ghostbusters Afterlife. Let's get this bad boy open. I had to grab some light. So is it fair to say I'm excited? Yes, absolutely, 100%. I am excited. Been waiting a long time for this. Obviously we have the Ghostbusters box. We've got the logo at the top there. Looks like it's supposed to be a biometric scan there. And we're just going to crack into this. It's going to be a fairly uh, informal video. Of course, there will be modification videos to come. Of course, I said that about the Aliens Pulse Rifle, and we've yet to see that. It's got the Ghostbusters Afterlife kind of fixings to it to look like the wood floor that Phoebe went and played with to get the ghost trap out. First thing we notice is a little white packet here with a proton pack blueprint showing the Neutrona wand and how it connects, how it uh, would slide onto the side there, as well as how to assemble the pack stand, and then what looks like some warranty kind of warnings stuff. We've got a little slidey door here. And if we slide that over, I think that is what gives us the ability to open that up. And the packaging here is super fun. Phantasmical samples, potentially sentient, handle with extreme care. Let's take a look at these samples here. Our potentially sentient sample is the marshmallow goop that you hang on the various uh, parts of the pack. Uh, that's not super exciting to me, but uh, kind of cool that they include that. Some folks really like that. They really like the mini puppets and whatnot. Phantasmical. Okay. Got a box that looks rather like the uh, the ghost trap cartridge. It's a shame that uh, they put so much work into all this packaging and it's kind of gonna not be looked at. Pack's gotta be on display and whatnot. Kinda cool that the, that the uh, faux trap has kind of a green inner lining. Just cute little nods to the series. And these are our mini puffs. And actually they look surprisingly well crafted. They just look like little plastic mini puffs. And that is in effect what they are, but the, uh, the burned look on them the toasty marshmallow goodness. Uh, they are rather cute, and they're very popular with the fans. Let's go ahead and open these up. And uh, it's worth noting that their hands are uh, posable and set with a Kung Fu grip so they can grip the wires. The heads are posable. They're uh, swappable as well. Three mini puffs in a variety of uh, states of happiness, curiosity, and uh, anger. Of course, they also have extra heads. Joe with his tongue out, kind of googly eyed. A guy with a kind of evil, sinister look. So it's cute. Mini puffs. Let's go back inside of our ghost trap core. And I think that's all we got with the secrets there. That's what we look like now, and this is where the fun begins, and man, admittedly, uh, I've, I've done some, some cosplay at the Texas Renaissance Festival, I've had a spirit pack for the past three or four years, it's been getting slowly modified, fairly proud of it, it's been a lot of fun, gets a lot of attention out in public, but I kind of take for granted how small it is and man this thing is honking i don't have a lot of hands-on with real or uh, full-scale packs but dang 
Uh, let's go ahead and try and get this out of here. It's got, it's got some heft to it. Oh my goodness. Set that right there. We've got just a little bit more inside here. It says Stan Spangler Nuclear Accelerator Storage Stand. So this is our storage stand. Inside we have some Ghostbusters stickers. Kind of cool, they've got kind of a retro feel to them. A kind of inverted triangle with Gozer there. You've got your terror dogs, variety of the Ghostbusters, the tan kind of uh, BDU flight suit that is uh, cut out. The Ghostbusters logo is cut out on both pages, so you kind of got a nice little set of stickers there. Are you a god? Fun. We have our 1984 sticker pack. There are better metallic stickers out there. It's kind of cool that they include this, so you can go from a non-movie, non-afterlife pack, and you can uh, make your pack look newer. You're still going to have some of the uh, wires and stuff from afterlife molded in, whatnot. Um, but there's going to be lots of people modding. That's half the fun with this stuff. We have Egon Spangler's journal. It is a little bit thinner than I thought it might be. And uh, they did sell this as kind of, you know, extras, kind of in-universe stuff. I'm mentioning the Scolari brothers there. Looks like uh, their take on the Ecto goggles, like from Afterlife, with the, uh, the camera built into it. Very cool addition there. We have the individual pieces. Kind of got a diamond plate texture on it. Got the Ghostbusters logo embossed. Very cool. And then this, I think, is what I am looking for here. When they announced this pack, uh, we were unsure how we were going to be able to connect our Spangler Neutrona wands, and this is what they came up with. Apparently it senses the voltage change on the wand, communicates that with the pack to turn it on and off. And uh, we have ourselves a wire loom here. It is sort of stiff, I'm seeing, which is about par for the course with kind of how the, uh, the spirit packs are nothing a little modding can't handle if it turns out to be super annoying there is our ion arm i like how they kept that off for shipping because it would be broken on, almost certainly we have a little orange tip which uh, might be great for cons and stuff especially for uh, places that might be very weapon conscious even though 1984 ghostbusters is one of the uh, top movies of all time not just a top comedy, very universally recognized, but some folks, who knows, with that political climate and stuff. And then we have uh, just a kind of crappy paper wrapping with the, uh, all of the mounts and hardware floating around, sort of loose in there for connecting your frame to your pack, your LC1 Alice frame. And I just so happen to have one of those in the garage waiting for this very occasion. All right, it takes a good firm press to get that in there. Just snap in like that. There we go. All right, that's killer. Let's go ahead and uh, put our little faux Amphenol connector or whatnot right in there. It is keyed. Key is out this way. It's the key master. All right. And if you bought this, at this point you're missing something. The last piece of the puzzle is, of course, the Spangler Neutrona wand. It's set up so that you can unscrew your cap back here. Your battery pack comes out, and then this guy slides in place. It's keyed so that this little notch goes down. And my Spangler one has been collecting dust because, well, it's not been getting used. And now my question is, Will my rail, which has a curvature to it, 
because I bent it so that it would fit my spirit pack for just kind of display purposes. Even though it has a spirit wand on it, which I have not taken off. It's heavily modified, so I want to keep that light uh, lighting and uh, use case. I want to keep that all the same. Uh, let's see if this fits the pack still with the bends that I put in it. And what I'm noticing here is this doesn't have a lot of flexibility. And I really wish they had given us just a little bit more cable length here. But uh, we'll just flex that for it. And it looks like with my bins, we're going to have a little bit of trouble there. If we get the point, that is that. And boy, is it a big old chunky boy. Let's get some batteries in it. Can take this off so that I don't break it. Get the stand out of here for now. Interesting, the ion arm actually doesn't appear to have any solid clips, screws, or anything. It's just kind of a friction fit, which is a little bit weird to me. Also, the fact that you can see these screws right here is bizarre. It's kind of cool that the end filter you can kind of see into it. There's already mesh there, so if you want to make a smoke kit for this thing, uh, you could probably put one in relatively easily. I'm excited about this. Now this is neat, because as I do this, I'm wanting to set this down. The ion arm on my spirit pack, and this is cool. This is a big, thick piece of brass right here, um, but you can take it off. You need screwdriver to get into the battery case. Phillips head or flat head, so you've got that sort of versatility there. Now I will be Swapping that out for a battery bank, perhaps a custom 18650 battery bank. These screws are captured, so that's cool too. So they're not just going to fall out. As stock, it takes four D cell batteries. Proper, proper D cell batteries here. Chill out. Okay, well, something started up now that you put batteries in. And uh, something I haven't seen talked about is the battery compartment here, at least on the factory model, is there is a gasket to keep that battery compartment at least water resistant. So that's pretty cool. Switch isn't as positive as I hoped it would be. The sound is coming from the top of the proton pack, which is pressed up against the couch, so it's fairly quiet right now. It's a little bit better. What I noticed in a lot of videos was the sound of the vibration motor is kind of off-putting. It's almost as loud or louder than the sound of the pack. So that's a little bit of a negative there. Um, got a little bit of extra plastic there on the in filter. We do have the afterlife startup sounds going. And uh, I, I've criticized this previously in public Facebook groups and stuff like that. The pack, but um, I'm really not impressed with the LED lights on the cyclotron. In the actual film, they used a incandescent bulb, like a halogen bulb, on an arm that spun to give this kind of unique afterlife uh, effect of the cyclotron spinning and it kind of looks like I don't know um, particles spinning in a cyclotron and uh, because this is an LED doing that you can really tell it's LEDs each light unit has three separate LED bulbs in it you can tell that the LEDs they don't go around they wouldn't put LEDs in there that they're not actually visible but it's kind of cheesy in my opinion and all that they would need to do to make that look better is to put a diffuser so that's my number one mod for this is to put a diffuser there over the cyclotron the pack sounds are just not it's not that they're not loud enough it's that they're not directed enough the pack sounds are coming out of the top here and i'm sure i could adjust the volume Seems that's as loud as it gets, even though know, there's no stop on this. So we can go down, 
you can hear how that vibration is there, but it's also really subtle, and it feels like a vibrator motor on like your Xbox controller or whatever, or any other experience you may have with vibrator motors. Um, it's really noisy, but it's not very rumbly here. So it's it's a weird effect. I, I almost don't like it. I would rather not do that. Um, there is a switch under here which doesn't do anything. Uh, so that may be a mod that I undertake is to turn off the vibration. And then you could do a 1984 Ghostbusters elevator scene, switch me on, and then you have the vibration turn on at that point. Perhaps that's something that could be done. I also noticed... Okay, and then it kicked up in vibration really quick there for a second and then turned off. That is the, uh, the auto timeout, which is another complaint. Something I'm going to be interested in doing is turning off the auto shutdown feature. I want my pack to stay on for when I'm walking around conventions or renaissance festival or whatever the case may be. And um, you're just automatically turning off like that's a bit of a joy kill. Uh, let's see if we can... Very cool. So, flipping the wand on, went ahead and turned the pack back on. Interestingly, it hasn't switched on the audio. Oh, you gotta have the volume up for that. Kind of cool when I switched up the activate switch there. Uh, the pack started vibrating. It was still audible. Complaint is still there, but key here is it did something slightly different when I turned that on. Yeah, that's the pack, definitely. And now the wand has its own vibration motor as well. And it's interesting because the lighting doesn't change the, the power cell while you're firing. That stuff doesn't cycle up with the actions of the wand as it would with like a sponge based electronics upgrade kit or the 2009 uh, Ghostbusters the video game where you know the pack overheats. That stuff is incorporated into the wand to some degree here, but not the pack. But when I fire the wand, the vibration motor does go and start fluctuating higher and lower. And of course, uh, now that the wand has died, the pack has also died. Switch them all off. I wonder what happens if I just hit activate. Nothing. So if you do them out of sequence, nothing happens. Gotta be, gotta be the sequence. So that is cool that the pack knows that I hit the activate switch and not just the first two in the sequence and the vibration motor kicks on a little bit heavier there. Kind of a cool effect. Very cool. So the gap there in turning this off completely and that coming off it's magic that it works it's a little bit kind of unfortunate that it takes so long uh but it is as they say what it is it's fantastic that it works so well out of the box very cool uh let's take a look inside the cyclotron uh in fact uh and it's also cool that uh the pack is switched on, switching the pack on from off switches the pack on, doesn't change anything with the wand. Leaving it on even after it's died, switching the pack on brings the pack back to life. And we can still do our, hey, switch me on scene. It's, it is really freaking cool. There's a bit of a disconnect for me because the sound's coming from the top and not from where that noise is 
supposed to be coming from more or less. Um, and perhaps a, a little speaker inside the in-filter might be kind of a, a good place for one. Uh, or just a larger speaker in the back like we do with custom packs. Uh, let's take a look and see what happens when we disconnect. If we push these two Allen keys in, we can disconnect. <laughs> That's cool. It's just a cool little attention to detail. The clipper is fake, um, but the top is aluminum right here. So we get, uh, and they have actually even dry brushed it or uh, more of a wash, a black wash down inside those cracks like I've done on the clipper here, uh, which again is plastic, but it's aluminum kind of in that, uh, in the, the crevices there and kind of giving it some life. I really think it looks very good, pretty good. Um, let's connect our ribbon cable back. That's really satisfying. That's really cool that it does that. Um, yeah. Now, I want to know is if we unscrew that and take off our bar and remove this. Okay. And I, I have seen videos of this before, but it's kind of like in one ear and out the other because we were watching a lot of um, stuff before uh, the details are finalized. Adam Savage had his videos and um, I'm aware of the little connectors here, um, but I didn't remember that this feature uh, disconnecting that was separate than the cyclotron coming across. Uh, so that's really cool that it does two separate things there. Uh, we also have our switches for uh, 1984 mode and then also I believe one turns the rumble off. These should come off. Yep. And they're kind of big knobbly rubber bits so not likely to fall out when you're at conventions or anything. Uh, we saw Phoebe taking at least this guy out in the movie and replacing it. Uh, so it's neat that you can do that. And they all do that. So that's cool. Little uh, emitter tubes or almost like vacuum tubes. I forget what the, the pieces are. This doesn't make sense to me in the context of kind of what we thought the cyclotron was. I mean, this is obviously LEDs running a ring in here. Um, in the movie, it looks like you've got particles moving, right? Inside of this larger cyclotron uh, housing. But this to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it almost looks like, I mean, it looks like little tiny conical reflectors like we use in, uh, you know, custom pack building because you need a reflector to really shine your LEDs and make that look satisfying. Um, shine it through a diffuser so it doesn't look like LED bulbs. It's kind of a bugaboo for me. Um, but this looks like little tiny lights, almost like the lights on aliens. Uh, so it's like you've got a little reflector there, which doesn't make sense for the concept to me of, you know, having particles moving around really fast in there. But the fact that you can take these guys out is super cool. Now what I'd like to do is dry brush some copper in there. So I don't know, uh, if you guys know how to take these apart and pull this little plastic shield off and, uh, <laughs> that's how you do it right there baby um i'm gonna dry brush some copper onto those and then uh maybe re-glue them because it, i might have done this one in a little bit there yeah so it looks like those are glued on uh it just takes a little bit of uh jaw strength and a little pull and then those will come off um but yeah they, they kind of need to uh, or or not yeah, these are actually rubber in here, and then this cap is plastic, and it's glued onto that top. So that's nice. That's an interesting little bit. I am going to be uh, conducting a little experiment with some, some dry brush copper on those. Um, I'm just going to take them all out right now because uh, we're going to make that look pretty. 
it's, it's fantastic. I mean, look at the, the rubber. Uh, you've got nice little places where you can push that down, hold the wires down to. Just having some wires loose in there. I mean, the fact that you can connect them and whatnot. This is like a childhood dream come true in a lot of ways. Um, whew, it's nuts. I want to get at these screws and take these guys off because I want to see how easy it is to put a, uh, a diffuser in there. I mean, you can even see the wires for the LEDs, a little ribbon cable going down to that LED, and, and you wouldn't be able to see that through that window. So I kind of want to fog up those windows a little bit somehow, make that LED light diffuse. It looks like there's some space in there to do that, so that's my number one mod project. All right, and then we've got this. Ooh, oh, okay. Nice. So the switch just gives you a, an audible LED click when you've done something there. I wasn't aware that was screwed on. Oh. You got another bolt there. Uh, this guy is very light and it doesn't need to be heavy and I don't know why they would want to make that heavy But like taking it out is not super satisfying, but it looks really cool. The paint's kind of uh, nicely brushed on um, Looks good uh, This could do with a little bit of a wash maybe and a little bit extra dry brush so So uh, a wash to sit in the low-lying spots between kind of the copper tubing and the wire um, and a little bit more uh, to bring out tops, but I mean for what you've got here. It looks fantastic You've got the wires. It'd be cool if those were colored wires. I would like to see that and that might be a, a Project that I undertake the end filter um, I don't know what this is supposed to look like do or whatever It doesn't come off it doesn't do anything here It'd be nice if this was somewhat interactive here uh, or just kind of empty and you could uh, use the space uh, you've got kind of a cage there it's nice that they textured that they put kind of the hexagons there honeycomb looking thing but I mean this is a spot that a lot of modders and a lot of different other packs use this for smoke effects and stuff I mentioned earlier maybe putting a speaker in there it'd be nice if that was accessible and uh, that this could come out easier or whatnot it's kind of maybe kind of goofy there and I don't know which of these switches does which so let's switch both of them let's put this guy back in there it's interesting that that smacks up against something that's spin it because presumably it's something that would spin okay uh, ugh, ugh. sounds like breaky sounds like breakiness I wouldn't over tighten that, folks. It sounds like that's something that could crack. Uh, so, and another thing to, to, to mention there is when you spin this, it, it also is tightening that that bolt in there. So, I'd get that to the orientation you want, tighten it, and then leave it. If you spin it, I think it's going to also, also tighten that bolt more and perhaps pull something through where you don't want it. <laughs> Uh, this is a little bit of a missed opportunity for me as I'm getting to, back to put this cyclotron cover on. I'm noticing that the wires cross over the hole right here. All you would need is just a little bit of a, a cylindrical shield there. Because right now what we're going to have to do is we're going to pl place this. And then, you know, you got to push those wires out of the way. That's kind of jank in my humble humble opinion not a huge deal uh, you definitely want our shock mount on and and I, if I'm not mistaken that spinning that piece on the inside so I wouldn't over tighten any of this stuff I would just go hand snug that's probably important uh, let's flip this bad boy on 
Um, okay. 1984. So again, for me, there's a little bit of a disconnect here because you hear the wand power down, then you hear the pack power down. It's a little bit wonky to me because, I mean, the speaker on the wand is almost as loud as the speaker up here. Of course, it's pointed at me, but depending upon where you're at viewing somebody putting, you know, a show on with one of these, uh, you know, cosplay or whatever the case may be, right? Um, you're going to hear one sound or the other louder and then two or three seconds before that was relatively fast power on so that's kind of cool but then needed a second there go off, pow, okay, all right, now I am going to figure out which one of these is the vibration versus the other, this is super cool, um, okay, It's interesting that once you take the cyclotron off, you got to turn it all the way off and then back on. Alright, so that's the afterlife sounds. Again, it sounds like there's vibration motors in there vibrating. It's not, oh my gosh, the pack is vibrating. It's a nuclear accelerator. It's, you can hear vibration motors. Something about that system, I, I don't know if it's plastic. It doesn't sound like plastic rattling, but it's almost like the vibration motor needs to be deadened somehow over, and that may take away some of the strength of the vibration, but it's almost like the sound is carrying through the plastic too much. That's just pure joy. That's happiness right there. That is 35 years of waiting and excitement for something like this. Why is this not something they just came out with, uh, you know, 30 years ago or so? We'd love to have something like this. It's not that hard, guys. Um, let's go ahead and plug our cyclotron back in. Get in there. Okay, so getting the dongle in back there. It's a little bit. Maybe a little silicone lube on those, make them go in and out easier. Tell you what, let's flip our wand back off. Turn it back on. We're in 1984 mode with the vibration on. Let's take this off. Tell me that's not cool. Okay. Um, what about 1984 mode with vibration off, on, and we take the cyclotron off? 
Wait till it finishes spinning up here. Alright. Okay, so that just kills it. It's interesting. Uh, it's cool that it does something different, like taking that off just powers it down. It makes it not work. Taking the ribbon cables off, potentially the ribbon cables go to some kind of computer on board, uh, some kind of voltage regulation, and uh, taking that off doesn't stop this and maybe makes it go out of control. So it's cool that it has that capability. And uh, again, <laughs> once you've done that, it requires a reset of the system. It's neat that the logic is, is uh, kind of programmed into it to behave in a certain way. It's interesting that just that's been popped off for I don't know how long. vibration is kind of killing me a little bit. You know, some of this stuff, frankly, I am a little bit worried that at a con or whatever, it's going to get tugged and fall off. I'm not crazy about that. Because some of it's not on there great, like one of those just, okay, so. It's kind of a one finger. I mean, just one one flippy do with the finger and that comes off. So some of this stuff I feel like it's gonna need some super glue or something on the other side kind of holding it on. You know, having kind of an emergency breakaway if something gets tangled or whatever, cool. But I mean maybe I'm just doing it wrong. No, no, that definitely goes. Yeah, so I mean there are things on this that are just not very well held on. Yeah. Just a pops it off. Don't care for that. Anyhow, I want to thank you all for watching Peace Loving Guns. If you like this sort of content, do make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share. All of those wonderful things help me to stay a little bit uh, more engaged with my audience, as well as creating more content and uh, inspired to do this. Um, we also just enabled the ability to do YouTube premium subscriptions, rather, um, channel memberships, rather. So uh, for just a dollar a month, you can have a channel membership for peace loving guns become a peace loving gunner today for a dollar a month and uh you get little uh dinky digital content like uh just a little thing next to your name that says you're a channel member how cool is that if you want to do that you want to do that there is the ability to do what's called a super thanks so if you found a video helpful you can always give money um don't just do this with me do this with other youtube channels uh I learn through YouTube. I learn so much through YouTube. So if any of your favorite creators or just a one-off video helps you learn something, consider tossing a couple bucks their way, help buy them a copy and, and make their existence just that much a little bit more pleasurable in this world. I, I really hope that uh, you're finding success in your life and um, finding happiness and joy. And I hope that uh, we're able to keep going with that. Do make sure to be good to yourself, love your neighbor, and stay safe out there. Have a good one, y'all.